Number 37. What is the minimum speed at which a source must travel toward you for you to be able to hear that its frequency is Doppler shifted? That is, what speed produces a shift of 0.3% on a day when the speed of sound is 331 meters per second? All right, so first we have our two Doppler formulas right on the right-hand side. Check out number 30. I went through a little detailed discussion on that. We have SMO, S-S-M-O, and then we have SOMS, S-O-M-S. S-O-M-S. SMO is stationary uh, source moving observer, and SOMS is going to be stationary observer moving source. We know SOMS has the sign on the bomb bombs, right? So I know which formula goes with which. Uh, so now, basically, uh, what I realize is it says the uh, source is traveling towards you. So the source is moving, right? So that's meaning I'm going to use my SOMS formula, all right? Uh, check out number 30. I went, you know, just I went through what they all mean and whatnot. So we have the frequency of the observer is going to be equal to the frequency of the source multiplied now by the velocity of the uh, sound divided by the velocity of the sound plus or minus, okay, the velocity of the source. Now, since the source is moving toward you, we're going to use the negative sign in here, not the positive. Again, reasons I discussed in that number. So it's going to be minus. Now, what they tell us here is that they don't give us any frequencies, right? But they're saying is uh, we're going to produce a shift, basically, of 0.3%. So what does that exactly mean? Well, if, we, if I were to kind of, let's just say I reorganize this. I'm going to divide out the frequency of the source from both sides. So in other words, I'm going to have the frequency of the, of the observer relative to the frequency of the source. That will equal then the velocity of the sound divided by the velocity of the sound minus then the velocity of the source. Basically, now what I realize is in order for the frequency of the source, for us to perceive a Doppler shift, the frequency of the source, let's just assume, was 100. Okay. The frequency then we would have to observe would be this, 100.3. Okay, 100.3. It has to be this percentage difference, basically, or aka 0.3%. All right. So we have, there has to be a difference of this amount, basically, um, relative to the frequency that the source is producing, aka 0.3%, in order for us to perceive uh, a Doppler shift. So if I were to now just plug in, you know, this 0.3 and how would I plug that in, it would, it would look something like this. I would take my frequency of the source is going to be 1, okay? And if I call the frequency of the source 1, that means the frequency of the observer, right, that the observer will experience will be 1 plus then 0.00. 0.003, right? Because this is basically the percentage increase, right? I know it's in a decimal, but you got to convert from percent to decimal when you do the calculation. And that works out to be now, right, 1.1.003, which is basically exactly what I was trying to describe over there, right? Except I was just doing it in terms of 100 instead of 1. So now I have this, and this fraction here will now represent you know, if I were to equal, this is the velocity of the sound divided by the velocity, the velocity of the sound minus the velocity of the source. So now what I can do is I can plug in now my velocity of sound, 331, over then 331, minus the velocity of the source. And that's what it's asking, right? That is what speed produces this shift. Well, this will be the speed once I solve for this and the velocity of the source. The source is what's moving, right? It says a source must travel toward you at what minimum speed. So when we solve this, we'll get our answer. So let's just do a little cross multiplication here, right? What I'm going to do is basically move this out of the denominator there up into the numerator, move this on down into the denominator. I'm going to get rid of the one because it's kind of pointless, all right? And I realize I have this basic fraction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this term, right? I'm going to add this term on over to the left. And then I got to subtract this term on over to the right. Uh, just excuse me. What what's my left and right? I'm gonna add I'm gonna add this term on over to the right and subtract this term on over to the left. There we go. Um, and the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I need a positive uh, velocity here. So vs all right the velocity of the source as relative to the observer is going to be equal to 331 minus then 331 all over 1.003. So let's see. So 331 minus then 331 over 
0 0.99, right? So here we go. This is going to be about 0 0.99, and that's good enough. Zero, I don't know, three sig figs, whatever. And that's going to be in terms of meters per second. All right, so that's the velocity of the source. It's going to have to be about one meter per second. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take care.